Uber driver guilty of murder, tried and convicted from a jury of his peers. This story got a lot to unpack here, probably has some overtones of hatred. There are no winners in this story. Many of you folks might even think your host is a piece of shit for what I'm about to say. Nevertheless, I've always promised that I will bring it to you as real as possible. This story will be no exception. What up, folks? Once again, it is your boy Tim with another distressing rideshare video. Uber driver, Army Sergeant Daniel Perry, a 33-year-old Uber driver in the city of Austin, Texas. This happened back in 2020, but he was just found guilty of murder last week. What happened was there was a Black Lives Matter protest in downtown Austin. This driver somehow found himself in the middle of the protest, apparently got into a melee with one of the protesters, and there was an exchange of gunfire. Now, I want you to hear the way the story is presented. And by the way, not only was the Uber driver military as in an army sergeant the guy he shot was also an air force veteran so understand these are both military personnel one dead and now one is convicted of murder hell of a lot to unpack here though listen to this this is what came from the news story perry talking about the shooter perry was driving for uber in downtown austin where foster was participating in a black lives matter rally on the night of the shooting, July 25th, 2020. According to police, Perry stopped and honked at the protesters as they walked through the streets before driving his car into the crowd. Got video from that. Check it out. Now, if you notice from that 39 second clip, No one was honking vehicles before this guy decided to honk his car horn. And apparently after that, you see folks running, you hear a shooting taking place. Now, the attorneys for the defendant, the one that has been convicted of murder, his attorneys have argued their client was forced to shoot Foster five times in self-defense after Foster approached his car with an AK-47. And at the time, there were no Uber passengers in the vehicle of the shooter. So obviously, we want to point out a a couple things, which is why I stated in the beginning of this video, there are no winners in this situation. Who the hell brings an AK-47 to a protest? That alone is a problem. I understand it's Texas. I understand America is pro-Second Amendment. We are a gun-loving society. But the idea that bringing a gun to a protest is a good idea or even the right thing to do is fucking ridiculous. How many of these stories we need to see? We can talk about Cal Rittenhouse. We can talk about folks doing things with firearms that they normally would not do. Which is also why the driver, in my humble opinion, is also not a good guy in this situation. I do personally believe that there are some folks out there who just should not have access to guns. Both of these men, both of these individuals were legal gun owners. There is nowhere in any news story that I can find that suggests either one of these men did not have the right to own firearms. So they both had their firearms legally. And both of them were carrying them in a legal manner at the time. Fact is, you can walk down the damn streets with an AK-47 anytime you want in the state of Texas. That alone is shocking. But I understand I have a lot of pro-Second Amendment gun-loving folks out there that think there's no big deal with this. Obviously, I have some criticism in regards to the Uber driver that decided to honk at the crowd. As you can hear in the video... That was a long, blaring hunk. It wasn't a tap. It was a long, blaring hunk. So he was clearly trying to get attention. There's no crime in doing that, folks. I honk at union protesters all the time. You see the sign, honk if you're for fair wages. Honk if you're for health care. I always do that. I'm a former union employee myself, United Parcel Service, at and I've been in two different unions, so I definitely support unions. Nevertheless, the honk coming from this Uber driver most likely was not in support of Black Lives Matter. And I'll explain to you why I take that position.
because it could have been otherwise. But I'll explain to you why I take that position shortly. He honked at the crowd to get attention. And if you notice in the video, that's exactly what happened. Now, my humble <laughs> belief is, and you can tell me where you think I'm wrong, I invite civil discourse in every video. He was doing it to get attention because he knew he had a firearm. There are some states, I believe that one of the Dakotas, either South or North, North Dakota, has passed laws that make it, um, I won't say they are in favor of doing it, but they will let you get off for running over protesters. If the protesters are blocking the road and you use your car to run one of them over, you don't face the same uh, you don't face the same accountability you might in some other states. There's a lot of hatred towards Black Lives Matter, folks. There's no denying there's a hell of a lot of hatred towards that group. President Trump refers to him as a terrorist outfit. So you get folks like this that are honking at him. You don't believe the cause. You believe they're a nuisance. They're blocking a the damn street, making your life miserable. So some folks take it out on the protesters. I personally believe he was honking at them in disgust or something of that nature. But that doesn't give anybody the right to walk up to his vehicle with an AK-47. Nevertheless, he wanted attention. Similar to, say, Cal Rittenhouse or George Zimmerman. Not to say that Cal Rittenhouse or George Zimmerman did not have a self-defense case. I certainly believe Cal Rittenhouse did have a self-defense case. But he put himself there deliberately. Same thing with this guy. Same thing with George Zimmerman. Folks are doing things they normally would not do simply because they now have a firearm. It's giving them the inclination to go out there and deliberately put themselves in a risky situation because they feel confident they might be able to shoot their way out of it. You think Cal Rittenhouse would not have been walking through that violent street in Kenosha if he didn't have that AR-15? You think George Zimmerman would have ran off in the night behind a much larger Trayvon Martin if he wasn't armed? Not saying either one of those gentlemen did not have to defend their lives, which led to a killing. I'm just simply saying they are doing things they normally would not have done if they were not armed, putting themselves in dangerous situations intentionally when it comes to George Zimmerman, even against the advice of law enforcement. So walking down the street with an AK-47 is something that during the protest, I, I just don't understand why... There isn't some law against that. I, Like I said, I understand we are a Second Amendment gun-loving society, but protests tend to be groups of people that are disgruntled about something, angry about something. To give them visible long rifles to walk down the street with... <sighs> This says not the 1700s. We're not fighting the British, folks. I understand it's going to turn into a pro versus anti Second Amendment argument, potentially in the comments. Folks are going to tell me I'm a damn idiot and you want, you're a libtard or whatever. Feel free to do so. We'll talk about it in the comments. But walking down the street in the middle of a protest with an AK-47, it's just... Like I said, I don't believe there are any winners in this story because certainly the driver wanted the attention that he ended up getting. If you hear the five shots in the video, there are two shots. There's a slight pause then you hear more shots. The, the actual victim did not fire a single shot at the protester or at the driver. And also we have to talk about the fact that he was an Uber driver carrying a firearm. Now, I've said in all of my videos, I am a strong proponent of carrying a firearm or some sort of weapon to defend yourself with every passenger on every trip every damn time. Too many videos of us drivers losing our lives or at the very least losing our cars to carjackers or at the very, very least getting the hell beat out of us by some passenger that is simply angry that you won't stop them at McDonald's. So I do advise drivers to carry some form of protection. Nevertheless, when you are carrying a firearm, there should be some higher level of judgment amongst the carrier. Do not deliberately put yourself in dangerous situations because every fight you get in, you're bringing a gun to that fight. 
You already know if you get in the fight and you're armed and you start losing the fight, chances increase that you may have to shoot and kill someone. So avoid getting in dangerous situations. In my previous video, right after Trump, President Trump called for protests when he thought he was going to be arrested a few Tuesdays back. I did a video about how to do ride sharing during riots and protests. And the number one piece of advice I gave is to stay the hell away from this shit. Not to drive down the street and honk at the damn protesters. This guy deliberately tried to put himself in the middle of the situation. He succeeded. And now he's had to go through a long ass trial. Now, here is the huge, huge issue with this. Probably should have brought it up earlier in the video. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has already stated before being asked that he intends to pardon the Uber driver in this case. That is why I stated earlier in the video that I did not believe this driver was honking in favor of the protesters that he was honking as a rebuke to what they were doing, maybe blocking the street, maybe saying things that are anti-police or something of that nature. The driver in this case, I believe, was against the protesters, did not like their cause, and did not like them. Why do I say that? Because Governor Greg Abbott stepped in and immediately offered to pardon this guy. Governor Greg Abbott, Abbott is a Republican Fairly far to the right, certainly not in favor or supporting Black Lives Matter. Hell, you, you have a hard time finding any Republican that is in favor of Black Lives Matter, certainly one that is in political office. So when Greg Abbott stepped up right away and offered to pardon this gentleman, it's safe to assume he vetted the guy he's about to pardon. The chances that you would look on this guy who's been convicted of murder, Army Sergeant Daniel Perry, some social media page or something out there, and he got a whole bunch of pro Black Lives Matter shit on his Facebook page with a fist up. Zero chance of that happening. Most likely, if you looked and found his social media page, he's in favor of right wing causes. Maybe he supports Governor Greg Abbott. Maybe he's a Trump supporter or something of that nature. I'm not suggesting he is, but I strongly believe the last thing the Texas governor would pardon is a Black Lives Matter supporter. I just don't believe that. And I definitely believe before offering to pardon this guy, he had someone vet who this guy is. You don't want to pardon some dude and you find out 10 years ago, he, you know, he was doing something with children or something. You want to find out who you've pardoned. And what makes the case even stronger is the governor has offered to pardon this guy before he even asked. You have to get convicted and then have your attorney send a letter to the governor after you've been sentenced asking for some form of relief or help. This defendant has not even asked for help. The governor is injecting himself into it and stating ahead of time, I believe this guy had an act of self-defense and was wrongly convicted. Now, he was convicted and found not guilty of something as well. He was convicted of murder, found guilty of murder, found not guilty of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Now, the kicker in this, normally when you have something that is controversial and the people are calling for justice, but the authorities do not want this person to face any time, they will charge him with something that is not likely to result in a conviction. Like, for instance, premeditated murder or something when it doesn't look like this guy intentionally murdered him, you know, he pissed off at the crowd or whatever. You charge him with the wrong type of murder and the jury following the instructions of what constitutes as that type of murder has to sometimes find him not guilty. Many folks believe that that is exactly what happened in the case of George Zimmerman, that he was guilty of a major felony with Trayvon Martin, but they deliberately charged him with the wrong crime to make it so he'd get off. Not here to argue whether that happened or not, but there are prosecutorial tricks you can play so that a defendant doesn't face the music if you don't want them to face it. But he was found guilty by a jury of his peers, not guilty of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. So what do you folks think in the comments? Think I'm missing the mark on this one? You think this guy, you know, was fighting a good fight? 
getting involved in a Black Lives Matter protest, honking his horn at him, and then having to shoot some dude walking up to his car with an AK-47, which is why I strongly state there are no winners in this. You don't walk up to somebody's damn car with an AK-47 in your hand. I don't agree with that either. But I do believe the driver, the Uber driver in this case, was looking for some drama. He was trying to instigate something and ended up going too far with it. I mean, he just ended up getting in something he didn't intend to get into. But nevertheless, he has went through the process of a long trial. I'm sure it's kept him up many nights. He's ended up probably paying a hell of a lot of money for legal fees, which probably might be donated back to him through some right-wing GoFundMe page. You know how that shit goes. I think that anyone, if you're out driving, and I'm going to give this advice once again, because apparently some folks think otherwise, if there's a protest or a riot or something going on in your area, it's probably best to just log out of the damn app. We're not making a hell of a lot of money in Rasher to begin with to be driving around risking shit like this. You see the flashing lights. You hear people chanting all types of hateful shit or even, you know, chanting anything, anything at all, walking through the streets and shit like that. You're outnumbered a thousand and one. Put the car in the garage for the night. Park the car on the street for the night. This is a bad night to be in ride sharing because you don't know where your passengers are going to go, for instance. You may pick up some of the damn riders. You just do not need to be out there that night. Maybe I'm missing the mark. You guys let me know what do you think, particularly what do you think of Governor Texas Governor Greg Abbott asking the state pardons and parole board to review the case before the suspect, or in this case the convicted, is even asking for help. It's got to be really uh, pleasing to the defendant in this case to have your lawyers come in and say, you know what, the governor wants to pardon you before we even ask. Saves them some money, saves them some time. And the governor asked that the parole board expedite the review of the case so he can pardon them quickly. Apparently he don't want the guy to spend much time in jail at all. This is a crazy one, folks. Nevertheless, it is your boy, Tim. Subscribe to the damn channel. Let me know. I'm look interested to see what happens in the comments on this, and I'll see you in the next video.